Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this video, we are going to talk about the new variant of COVID-19 and that is Omicron variant. We have talked about the COVID-19 variants earlier. We have talked about the COVID-19 mutations, the coronavirus mutations and how they acquire mutations and all these details. But if you want to know about the Omicron variant and should we be concerned about the Omicron variant, then this video is just for you because we are going to dis uh, discuss about the difference between the earlier deadly or uh, the, the very dominant delta form of this virus and now the difference between the delta form of the virus with the omicron form of the virus now you probably have heard this in the news feed and all these places that this omicron variant uh, is spreading and started from the south africa and is being spreading in different different parts of the world now let's look at the uh, features of this so let me uh, simply move to the next slide here and i'll take a color and i'll try to explain what we mean by this Omicron variant. The very first thing is that should we concern about that but to understand this Omicron variant is newly found variant and it is found at least 100 individuals affected in South Africa. Apart from South Africa there are different places of the world like Hong Kong, UK, Belgium, Israel, Denmark. This virus has already been transferred. So we don't know whether it's, uh, it's there in India. So in our country hopefully it reach. I, I'm not like it's normal for this virus to reach there. We should not hope uh, this virus much uh, reach us. But there is a high chance that in India this virus has already been moved. Because at the very earlier preliminary stages, when the virus starts to spread, uh, when it spreads to only 2, 3, 4, 5 people, it's very difficult to track it and, and find it out. We can only tell this after 14 days. So from this date, I am recording this video on 30th November 2021. And from this date to 14th day, after 14th day, till this 14th date, we can get to know about more about this uh, virus in India and whether this virus transported to India or not. Now, what I can tell you is that all this virus, these different variants of SARS-CoV-2 that we are uh, talking about, that we have talked about, the difference, the mutations, the changes that they occur is always in this portions. It's always in the spike proteins. These are known as spike proteins spike proteins are the uh, are the structures with which it interacts with lock and key fitting model with host means our body cells okay our body has our cell it has kind of a lock and this spike are just like a key so it connects to the lock it opens the lock and it can go inside our body and can start showing the symptoms so whenever we are talking about mutations Okay, all these variants, they carry a lot of mutations. So, for example, this virus X, there are two mutations. That virus X becomes a, a different variant. Now, that new variant has 10 more mutations. It becomes something new. Now, the question is, why do virus acquire mutation? Because mutation is a random process. We cannot control it. So, there are environmental changes and all. So, this is always a chance of mutation. But among those mutations, the virus will retain those mutations which are good for them. Let's say, a virus earlier attacks our host like that and now we design anti uh, you know we produce antibody against this spike protein so antibody will bind against it and it will kill the virus so that same receptors are not capable of causing infections in our body so if this virus receives something new let's say uh, uh, some sort of new modifications to the spike like this so now our earlier old antibodies cannot bind old antibodies cannot bind so they, they cannot destroy the virus anymore. So that virus with this new acquired change will become a new variant. Got it? This is the simplest way I can explain how the variants form in the very first place. So like this, there are different forms. There are alpha, beta form, delta form and now this omicron form. Now I am going to talk about these three different forms separately. I am going to talk about the, the beta form and I am going to talk about the delta and then I'm going to talk about the Omicron form. And what are the difference between the three is that the major differences is that this beta form earlier and delta form both are concerning. Why? Because I hope you all heard about the delta form. It was a dominant form. Dominant means in India, many people got affected. Throughout the world, many people got affected. So it became a dominant form. But there's a good and bad thing. The, the bad thing about the delta form is it's very high transmissibility high transmissibility it spreads from one person to the other person one to ten persons at the very beginning we know that the virus spread from one to three person but this became delta become one to ten percent uh, infectivity very high transmissibility this delta uh, has okay at the, at the way transmissibility means from one individual how many individual it get transferred to so that was very high for delta that was bad about delta but the good thing about delta is that our indian vaccines 
Indian vaccines working against the Delta variant. It, it helps to kill the Delta variant. I mean, uh, the antibody that we develop after the vaccination helps to kill the Delta variants. So, Delta variant was not a concern for Indians, at least at that moment. But what about the beta variant is that beta variant is not that transmissible like delta but the beta variant is dangerous because our vaccines vaccines may not be that much effective against the uh, beta variant and one more thing is that the beta variant causes repeated infections repeated infections means multiple infections for a single person for example you had covid 19 earlier Beta variant can cause a COVID-19 again in the future. So that was a bad thing about the beta variant because the vaccines are not that much effective against the beta variant. Okay. But now what we are going to see is that because the beta variant contain two such mutations that make this beta variant dangerous and uh, resistant to the vaccination. Similarly, when we talk about the Omicron variant, we found out that kind of changes, that kind of changes in the Omicron variant. See, as I mentioned that this Omicron variant contains 50 mutations in all total, 50 mutations, 50 different changes in this and most of these changes are in the spike proteins. More than 30 of them are present in the spike protein. See total 50 different mutations and more than 30 of them are present in this spike protein and we are going to see that with the help of the image. Particularly there are two mutations, particularly there are two mutations P681H this one and N679K. N679K and this one P681H. Now what are this? Why the nomenclature is provided? I have explained that in a separate video. You can watch that. I am not going to uh, talk about that now. So they rarely, these two mutations are rarely found out. But this can make this Omicron variant resistant to the vaccine. And that is a growing concern. That means all our groundwork that we have done for the last one and a half years regarding the vaccine, production of the vaccine, vaccinating people and all this thing will be in vain if this Omicron variant are resistant to the vaccine. We don't know how much vaccination is effective against the Omicron variant. That is a most difficult part right now. That is the highest concern of us right now. Okay. Now if you look at here, these are the two different variants. This was the Delta variant known as B.1.167.2 and Omicron variant B.1.167.2. 1.529, 1.1.529 and 1.1.617.2. These are the two differences, and you can see the uh, picture here. In the big picture, you can clearly see that this is what we are looking at the spike proteins. This is a spike protein region. This is also a spike protein region. Uh, let me show you a clear image. This image is more clear here. So let me show you here that this is the delta. This is Omicron. And you can see the red dots. These are the mutations. The red dots, the red hotspots are the mutations. This is mutation and you can clearly see that the number of mutation is much much greater in the omicron than in delta there are only few mutations you can see the red dots few but here you can see plenty of dots 18 amino acid mutations are there in delta 43 amino acid mutations are in omicron okay and in the spike protein 34 residues are there but in earlier delta only 8 residues had this mutation but in Omicron 34 residues so up approximately 2 to 3 times than uh, modified amino acids are present in the Omicron variant the modification so what in, in very simple terms what will happen all the spike proteins that these Omicron variants are going to produce there will be something different something new which our immune system may not recognize first of all second thing our vaccine may not be that much effective third thing it has it must have higher transmissibility that's for sure after all these years of understanding and learning microbiology, I can tell you one thing that this Omicron variant obviously will be more transmissible. There is no doubt about it. But about the other things, we need to study and find out. So what is the growing concern right now? The very first thing is that is it more transmissible? Is it? Is the fact is still not understood because it's only few days. The first uh, uh, report of this uh, Omicron variant is I think 26th November. So it's not that much uh, time past so research is going on but what I can tell you is that yes it must be because, because otherwise there is no chance that this virus is going to mutate itself obviously it's going to stay that means it will be more transmissible from my point of view I can tell you that second thing is that is it more severe causing disease no not necessarily a virus is acquiring more mutation does not mean it will be more severe okay it may be even less severe or it may be similar degree of severity 
third question is can it be detected with pcr this is established the fact is done yes it's fact it can be detected with rt pcr test can vaccine prevent it now this is the million dollar question right now this is what we should search for everybody should search for can vaccine prevent it we don't know that for sure because there are plenty of mutations and we don't know how exactly our vaccine is going to act against it there are multiple vaccines maybe one or two of them can work because there are many types of vaccines available right now so we need to check it out and it will take time uh, to come and the final thing what are the chances of reinfection this is another growing concern that because we know that the 50 percent of the population in india like 100 crore in india is vaccinated with one dose 50 percent will be vaccinated very soon with both the doses so if 50 percent of the population which is a huge chunk in india so if there is a chance of reinfection to those patients till now what we found out is that uh, recently i studied uh, i've checked uh, a report uh, of uh, canadian hospital and uh, another place in uh, hong kong and what they found out is that most of the people are getting in this infection 50 percent of them at least in that hospital 50 percent have a reinfection so yes there is there will be a chance of reinfection because you know uh, most of the people will be vaccinate, vaccinated or they already incurred this virus at some point of their time in this two years time frame so if this virus need to infect obviously some people will reinfect so there will be a chance of reinfection with this virus there is no doubt about it so these two things i don't have doubt about it, it most of the like 90 percent chance it will have higher transmissibility and uh, there is a high chance that it will cause reinfection but hope and we must think positively about the vaccine our vaccine must protect us otherwise it will be in all in vain so what is uh, required to be done right now right now at this moment of time it's a mandatory thing that you should strictly follow the covid protocols and covid norms along with that the international troubles must be blocked and banned for for at least 14 days at least to find out what's going on in india like how exactly it spread because once it's there in in one place in india in one state or in one location it will spread like rapid fire this is something that we need to uh, do right now block the international travels for 14 days and let's wait for 14 days check who got infected with uh, this particular variant omicron and uh, just separate them out and then uh, isolate them get this thing over with within 14 days and then we'll restart everything all right so wh has been uh, conducting meetings to find out the different outcomes of this so that's uh, the news right now about the Omicron variant of SARS-CoV-2. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.